what is going on guys it is chris here and welcome back to the channel today we're going to be doing a recap of our october 10th week we're going to be going over five trades four of them were winners and one of them was a loss but i really want to break down what i was thinking on all these trades and how on our loss which was 30 percent in the midweek we actually had a 1800 percenter right after that and 200 percent and 700 percent so i want to break that down the thought process between those and how you can kind of make a losing trade you know you don't have to be stuck on that for too long you can have a winning trade right afterward maybe it's big maybe it's small but we're going to be going over that we're going to start on this 600 percenter that we had on the 11th so let's just hop right into that the first trade that we had was at 11:48, and we entered this trade simply because we were breaking down from this zone so as you can see in the early morning on es here we're having a nice uptrend and now in the late day, what I'm thinking is either we're gonna break down here. So if we're looking at you know previous price action, we're either gonna try to break down and reach this target down here, which is this bottom trend line support, which is, is a, it's a likely target. But down here, what's happened is we've actually broken above this trend line. So what you can see is we've had an overextension. So we've rejected here, here, and here. And then we had chop and we actually broke above. Now, when I saw this price action, we broke below, had a few liquidity grabs, retested, and now we're failing to actually break back above this area right here if it wanted to go to high days you kind of have to have this mentality if it wanted to go new high day have a run into the power hour it would have gone right there now this breakdown is telling people will say oh well, I'll, I'll buy the dip right but then it just continues to dip so this entry right here at 11:48 at vwap i'm not worried whatsoever about that bouncing vwap simply because of the amount of sellers that are actually increasing as price continues to be driven down so that entry right there was you know perfect in my opinion and of course that's you know 11:48 to 12:15. So in under 30 minutes, we got about 600% on those zero to ESPX. So very nice trade on that. 600%. Let's call it that. Uh, and on to the next one. So for the next one, we did spy puts at 12:49 the next day. So let's just check these out again. I'm doing this on the ES chart just because this is my favorite sort of charting uh, ticker to do it on. So on this one, we had our trend line support. Now we bounced one, two, three times. I guess you could say this is a little bit of a flag, right? So you have a little bit of that. Uh, resistance at the top level like so but i'm really just looking for a breakdown especially when we had three tests and now we failed to really break above like we saw in that previous example we saw a break above the trend line and it actually extends above so an extension off the trend line here we're seeing a, a fourth test now at this moment in time i'm thinking okay either we sell off or we kind of just chop around but this this candle is telling right so we break below on the fourth test finally the sellers are finally coming in about 10 minutes left in the market we hop in those puts and the reason i get actually spy instead of spx is because on spx i'd say for lottos on um you know power hour it's best to do those in the early power hour not in the late power hour because what's going to happen is these ones will just lose so much premium and you're not really going to be getting any fills because the bid and ask are going to widen dramatically now with spy it trades 15 minutes after power hour now we're after the market closes of course so you have some more time on those so that's why we got you know that trade about 200 percent let's call it that uh very nice trade at power hour. it's a good one so the next one we got into these are the two really important ones this is the most important part of the video right here on the 14th we had an absolutely or the 13th we had an absolutely insane day and that's because we had our cpi data release that came in at 8.2 i think and it was an estimate or consensus of 8.1 which is huge overreaction right so we drop over 100 points in the market it was like a 150 point drop and now we begin to see this uptrend as the market opens so i actually was thinking of taking a little bit of puts here simply because i thought this was a very large bounce off the lows what i'm looking at here is a trend line so we bounced a few times over here and we've kind of respected this trend line again here and so i'm thinking from my ideology i'm thinking okay we're gonna break down here right I was wrong, of course, which is why we took a little bit of a loss, but we exited this trade very quickly. As you can see, even on SPX zero DTE only took a 30% loss and right afterward. Okay. Now I'm thinking that we've had a gap. So we have a gap over here. You can't really see it. If I go to see if we can do this real quick, if I go to the SPY chart, there's a gap. So when we entered this trade at 807, it was right here. 807 was right there. And I'm thinking, okay, now they're actually targeting this gap fill. So even if we did a two minute trade, we just enter calls one, two, easy that's already like i think it was already at like 80 percent in two minutes just like that but we obviously held this trade now through the gap because we don't even see a candle close below so we've closed candles on the one minute in the gap and now we've broken above so there's actually no reason because we're actually having a short squeeze here there's no reason to be selling at least in full we can still be holding runners during this huge push now i exited my trade in full i think around here at 8:38, right before this last pop but this trade went even higher an insane trade at that 
about 2,000, 3,000% at its peak, but very good trade just off of our full exit at 1,800%. So that's important to say, you know, after you have a loss, you don't have to really be stuck on it for too long. When you have the correct sizing, even if the next trade were just a 50% gain, not a 1,800% gain, you're still able to, you have to be able to overcome that loss very quickly, especially in the day trading world, because or else you're going to be stuck on that for way too long. It's going to impact you for the rest of the day, or maybe even for the rest of the week, if it's a big ass loss. So keep that in mind, please. Let's just go back to the ES chart for the last trade here. So the last one was 700 the next day on our ES short. I remember this, of course, I didn't hold the, the trade in full, but we entered this one right here in the morning. Now, this is probably the easiest structure that you should know when you're day trading on ES, SPY, SPX. This is a very, very easy structure and simply a run. And then we you know, start to downtrend off this top that we form. It doesn't always have to be a very steep rally, by the way. It can it can just be sort of off the top. You have a small, uh, small dip and sort of a, a modest rally here. But this is the most important part. So notice in this portion of the chart, I guess you could say, again, this is a little bit of a flag, but it really does not kind of get into that flag status because you've actually extended so far and it's not really a channel anyway. So what happens is we have a liquidity grab. What that means is that the buyers temporarily came in kind of like, I want to call it a fake sort of pump right here. And what they're doing is, you know, big money is trying to grab liquidity for a move in the opposite direction. Now it doesn't happen every single time, which is why you have to play it by ear. But my sort of rule of thumb is when we see this liquidity grab, which is going to be downtrend, random ass pop, and we start to downtrend again, or big red candles afterward, I'm looking for puts here because what's going to happen is if we look at this with no indicator, no indicators, nothing at all, people will say, okay, I want to buy this dip um, or I want to buy in here. Now it's consolidating below the low. This is actually an awful area to buy simply because they already have their goal in mind. Their goal is to just make the price sort of go down obviously so we've had this liquidity grab our entries right here below view up after we've broken this low we've had a candle close below we already have profit on the next candle and i told everyone in the discord please hold here because right now we're just going to see a rejection off view up or the 90 made it's very difficult for them to actually have buyers in here and start driving the price back up they would have to have so many buyers in this area and it's very unrealistic for buyers to come back in so that's why we hold it off the 90 May rejection. Again, here, no reason to sell. We didn't even break this high. Now, if we had broken this high, that's when we exit in full. We already had our profit here, but we would have exited in full if it broke this way. That means that the buyers are actually somewhat in control at this consolidation level. So we break down here. This was news, but we held through the news and we had a nice reaction um, into, the, into the rest of the day. And again, paper handed this one. I think it went, uh, it was over 100 points on the ES short. So we shorted at, 96 in this one all the way down to 91 so that would have been call it a thousand percent on a, on a short or 100 points very nice trade that um we'll leave it off here very good very good week 13 and 15 87 percent overall accuracy so hopefully we can continue to have this sort of streak into the rest of october hopefully you guys enjoy the video let me know if you have any questions i'm on discord of course you guys can always dm me i'll see you guys next week for another recap peace y'all